Good morning, guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey, Adam G, your online queen inspirational talk show. As we all know, the Miss Reynaldo International Del Cafe pageant is just around the corner. And last night, we spoke to our inaugural representative, Rufa Nava, to talk about her excitement and preparations for the upcoming Colombian pageant. And now, let's talk to her fellow Miss USA sister. So here she is. You know, I'm really excited to talk to her because I just read her resume. And wow, she really has an interesting story to tell. So here she is. I'll bring her up. Please say hello to Miss, oh, Miss Reynado International Del Cafe USA 2022. Rebecca Stutton, live all the way from Los Angeles, California. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Merry Christmas. Belated Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Yes, we're celebrating. Oops, over here. <laughs> yeah. <We're> celebrating still. <laughs> Lovely Christmas tree you got there at the back. <laughs> so, you know, thank you. First of all, uh, before we proceed with the interview, I want to say a huge shout out to Sir Giuseppe, your national director, for making this interview possible. Sir Giuseppe, thank you for making this interview so, so, so possible. I can't wait to get to know her in the next few minutes. So, you know, it's my pleasure to meet you finally, you know. Yeah. Miss Rebecca, so how are you feeling right now so that you're excited. about to leave? Honestly, Adam, I'm so excited. I like I have just the chance to see Colombia in general, just to start there. I'm blown away. The only things I'm hearing is try everything. The food's amazing. The views are insane. It's a gorgeous place. So just I'm ready. <laughs> I want to do it tomorrow. Guys, look at her face. I'll hide my face. I'll hide my face temporarily so you can see how beautiful she is in close up. See, you know, doesn't she remind you? Doesn't she remind us someone from Hollywood? Oh, thank Hayden you. Hayden Panettiere right. from Heroes, from the TV series Heroes a decade ago, right? Anyway, that's just me. Oh, yeah, she's really yeah. beautiful. And you know, um, when, when I reposted your photo, your latest glum shot photo uh, from on Instagram, everyone said that you are so, so beautiful. And even you, you even look like a Miss Universe candidate. Yeah, the one that I got from MV Lo Nueva Era, the one where you, you were like, um, sitting behind the wall. I was not sitting, you know, standing behind the wall and just looking at the camera. Yeah, everyone's saying that you look so gorgeous there. So sweet. I honestly I have the best team. I had Vano doing my makeup. He's insane. He did it tonight too. <laughs> and my photographer, Noel. That's great. That's great. Incredible. So, you know, um, <laughs> is this your first time to join a pageant? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. I'm stoked about it. I've, I've never had this opportunity. I grew up more as a swimmer, kind of on the athletic side. This is a whole new world for me, but the more that I learn and the more that I'm in it, I'm so in love with it and I never want to go back. I didn't realize it was a possibility, but yeah, ever since moving to Los Angeles, it's been like, like a hit the ground running type of thing and just a total fairy tale. So when is the pageant happening again? We leave in, in Colombia. We leave in two days. Um, so we get there on the first. We'll be spending New Year's in the air. And then we get there on the first. And I believe the pageant is um, at the end of the week on the on the <laughs> on the eighth. <laughs> oh, it's it, oh, it will just be very quick, like a yes. week long pageant. Yes. <laughs> so how are you preparing for it? You know? Every, for everything. Um, I've got an awesome team here, luckily, because like I said, I'm kind of green into the industry. Um, but I've got Alfredo doing my runway training. I've been learning different walks. I've been learning different poses. I've been learning how to like little things that you just don't think of until you're in the world, like how to sit, how to talk, how to stand, how to breathe. <laughs> um, and it's just, it's been an absolute dream. I feel like it's been nonstop since we started. 
So this is like a whole new world for you. Totally. <laughs> so I, I am assuming you had all these um, sort of miscongeniality moments. <laughs> Remember that movie? I don't know if you've watched it Absolutely. where Sandra Bullock was on, the character of Sandra was undergoing a major, major makeover. <laughs> yes. Adam, that has been my story, like to the T. <laughs> but like I said, I've been right. so lucky to have such a good team to be patient with me and coach me through everything. It's just, it's been an absolute dream. Um, there's a viewer who's watching us right now. His name is Marky from the Philippines. She's, he says, you're so gorgeous. Oh, thank you, Marky. That's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, she, you you are. For sure, if we all get the chance to meet you in person, you will probably <laughs> say you're more beautiful in person. Probably. Thank you. <laughs> but, you know, since you, since you mentioned about your story, so... How did you, and your background as a swimmer? So can you tell us more about your a little bit of your background? How did you get involved with pageantry with Reynaldo? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's um <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes when you like tell stories, they're like almost unbelievable because you're just like, I don't know how I got from A to B, but here we are. Um, I uh, like I said, I grew up uh, in a small town in the middle of the country. Um, I was an athlete my entire life. I took that through college. Aspirations to go to the Olympics, but um, in swimming, you have to be top two in the country. The closest I got was ninth. So it was just like not even, not ever really even a possibility. <laughs> um, but it's something that I did for 15 years. So it was my entire life. Um, and unfortunately, in the middle of the country, in smaller towns, acting, modeling, pageantry, it's not really... Um, as well known, it's just it's it's just not part of the culture in the middle of the country, uh, so it wasn't ever an opportunity for me. But I do have television, and I did watch you know the models on TV, the actresses on TV, the pageants on TV. I've seen it all. You just you feel like it's so far away. It's just not ever you know it's for them. It's it's not ever for you. And um, it was you know I, I remember getting interviewed for the paper for a swimming article when I was eight years old, and I said you know I, I want to be a model, I want to be an actress, I want to be all these things, um, like knowing in the back of my head like it's it's not my reality. But the pandemic hit, and I think for a lot of people it was a time of like self reflection, a time of like okay I'm gonna check in with myself. Do I like how my life is going? Am I am I happy? You know, God forbid something happens to me. A am I proud of the life that I live? And I wasn't, I was doing fine. I was managing grocery stores. I did it for a little over five years, but I wanted to be a model and an actress. I want, you know, I had all these dreams and aspirations for myself that I was just not on the path to do. So I left my job with the grocery, uh, grocery stores. I sold everything I owned and I moved to California to pursue it finally. <laughs> and, um, I honestly have just been super lucky since I've been out here. And that's the honest answer. I've met the best people. I don't know how that happened, um, but I've just been so fortunate. One thing led to another. Um, I, I met Joselito with with the pageantry and he did a pretty, pretty <laughs> friendly interview process with me for a little over two hours. And um, I'm not sure how many other girls he selected, but I again, I got super lucky. They trusted me, you know, invested in me and we have just had an absolute blast ever since. It's just... I keep oh, thinking, so, so, oh, so that's how you got started for the pageant. Yes, yes. Yep. You know, I really find it interesting because you said earlier that um, it has been your dream to become a model, but then, you know, and then you move, but then you move to LA. Is it true that if uh, people like you would like to have um, a successful acting career, you go you go to California to pursue it. But if you want to have a successful modeling career, oh, you go to New York in the East Coast. Is that true or not necessary? Yes, there's, there's some validity to that. So I would, speaking from what I've learned in my studies and my research on it, high fashion modeling is more prominent in New York. So if you have that high fashion, edgy, like really attractive, interesting look, New York, absolutely. If you're more of a commercial I'm not, yeah. I, you know, I'm happy with the way that I look, but I have more of a, you know, just like a dorky girl next door look, you know, that kind of look, that's more LA, more lifestyle, more fitness, more just, you know, 
stuff that I'm familiar with, it, with, with my background, that's kind of why I chose to be here. Ah, uh, all right. So, <laughs> yeah, it's because I feel like since, you know, Hollywood is based there in California. So, yes, you, you're you more interested to pursue your um, acting career to go big it's, time in the mainstream. The more that I yeah. learn about the industry, it has trended that way. Absolutely. It started off modeling. And like now that I'm in it, I'm like, no, acting's really fun. Like there's a lot to it. So from modeling to acting, how was the adjustment process like for you? Did you have any difficulty adjusting, especially now that you're competing for Reynaldo? Um, I would say I had a harder time. I had a harder time coming from managing grocery stores and being in the business world and then going straight into modeling. Um, because in modeling, there, there isn't a lot of like there isn't a lot of verbal communication. It's all nonverbal. It's all, hey, I need you to show me this emotion without saying anything. It's all through your eyes. And I'm so used to having to like speak and like talk to people and make sure my words are right and articulate everything. Um, so the modeling I had a, a harder time with, but then when they said, okay, now, you know, now we want you to act. So now we want you to say things. Now we want you to speak now, you know, and still show the emotion in your face, but, but a lot more of the talking role. I think I was a lot more comfortable with that. Honestly, <laughs> I was like, okay, this, this is my realm. This makes sense to me. So have you gotten projects since pursuing your acting career there in LA? Yeah, I've been really lucky. I've gotten on a couple commercials. Um, the last one I filmed was a Nike commercial. I didn't have a speaking role in it, but I um, I jumped off a 10 meter platform for them. And um, that was like a week and a half ago. And I've gotten the chance to um, do some background roles with some um, HBO TV series. And um, I'm in the background of Margot Robbie and Brad Pitt's new movie that's coming out. Oh, have you that seen them really in person? Cool. Oh my gosh, yes. And Margot Robbie. How, how do they look like in person? Way oh, better than you how think, they look on magazines. You think she's a goddess from watching her movies? In real life, like the clouds actually part and the sun just shines on her. Like she is that gorgeous in real life. It's you no, know, it's crazy. Like you can't, I can't even begin to explain it. And she's so nice. Like in between takes, when you should be like nervous and practicing lines and like rehearsing and focused, she's thanking everybody. Like everybody. Like people that aren't even in the scene. She's like, thanks for coming. Thank you for your time. I just, it's yeah it's, it's did you get to talk to her yeah in yeah I, me? yeah um i there's a, a scene in one of them where she like pats my head and she tells me to like wake up or um something that pertains to the scene and i just like i didn't expect it so i like turned around and i was like this close to her face and i was just like <gasps> with my eyes i was like i love you <laughs> like <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> i was I, I don't get like starstruck and like really, that moment though i was like Oh my gosh! This is this is it. This is the pinnacle. Like this is the coolest thing I've ever <laughs> I've ever done. <laughs> what about Brad Pitt? He's Have brilliant. you met him in person as well? Yeah, yeah. I met. I'm. I'm. There's a couple of scenes where I'm like right behind him. So before we started filming, we would have like the door closed, and it would be me and him and like two other people. So, like small talk, you know, like this is really cool and, and stuff like that. Nothing like, hey, like tell me how you feel about this and. Um, but, uh, so we had a couple of moments together, but mostly watching him work is insane. Cause I think he is also like helping produce the film too. Um, so he, he would film a scene and he would go all out and he would, you know, be this character and be this actor and they would yell cut. And then he would say, okay, this is what needs to happen differently. This is what I'm going to do differently. He was like directing and acting at the same time. It was just it, it was so cool. <laughs> like, they're brilliant. These people are brilliant. You know, listening to your enthusiasm while sharing that story, <laughs> I think I want to be in your shoes and meet oh those God. two incredible, lovely people there. So I yeah. want to ask, um, at what point did you realize that you had a passion for acting? Because you mentioned earlier that, you know, yeah. since eight, you were dreaming to become a model. Yeah. Um. 2013 I remember it was when um the wolf of wall street came out and I this is one of those stories that you're not gonna believe but it was when I saw Margot Robbie act for the first time and I was like oh my gosh like that's what I want to do I never thought that I would get the chance to meet her ever like again this is like back when I was in the midwest like it, I, I was still like in college like this was never gonna be an option for me 
And I remember seeing her like come up on the screen and I was just like, this is like, this is like, she's amazing. Like, this is so cool. Like, this is something that I would want to do. This is, you know, definitely like the path that I, I saw for myself when I was like really young. Um, but yeah. And then I moved here and I met her and it's just like, it's things like that where you're like, wow. Like just, yeah. Oh my God. So I can envision <laughs> how you must have reacted when you finally saw Margot Robbie in person. It's like, oh, Adam, I love that. through. <laughs> yeah. It was so cool. I hope you don't mind me asking this since, you know, we're talking about your work uh, as an aspiring actress in Hollywood. Um, is the pay good? Um, I honestly, I don't know enough about it to know because I'm still non-union i'm still working on non-union rates um i'm eligible now but i i haven't like jumped over to the to the union side of it yet um i've i've read a lot about you know some of the roles in like major movies and they seem to be doing okay um <laughs> the pay that they get um for background i mean it's you know it's it's minimum wage background work if you're non-union it's not anything to like brag about but to be honest I, I, I've I've done a career where I've made a ton of money and not enjoyed what I've done. And I prefer personally, it's not for everybody, but I, I prefer enjoying what I do on the day to day and making enough money to live, live my life versus making a ton of money, not enjoying my day to day and saving it so that I can go on vacation for one week out of the year and enjoying my life. Like I would rather, so you know, just make make the break even and enjoy every day so if that's background roles and it doesn't pay a ton i'm i'm okay adam <laughs> I'm gonna be just so the, reason, you know, the reason why i ask because he said it's enough so is it enough to cover your monthly cost of living expenses there in la like your rent your food um of course you're probably a uh, gym membership since you know you need that as part of your <laughs> yeah part of your uh, work so yeah but is is it enough to you know cover everything yeah for the california work is no joke um not right now for me it's not an, but there's a lot of people out there that are doing a lot better than i am that have been in the industry longer i'm sure they make a lot more um i that that's been a struggle a transition for me but i'm also from the middle of the country where cost of living is nothing like absolutely nothing and then you come here it's kind of a culture shock because like you have to relearn the price of everything like a bottle of water back home is a dollar a bottle of water here is like six six ten dollars <laughs> yeah it's like yeah or ten dollars honestly it's probably closer to ten um and and so it's just like it's getting accustomed to like okay this is life now this is this is what you have to do to, to provide for yourself so it's it's been a culture shock and a challenge for me, but again, I, I I don't regret being like I love life here. It's worth it to me. And the reason I ask this is because you know I'm also I also love you know following Hollywood celebrities and you know and when they get to be interviewed, especially about their humble beginnings, they would always say they would always gladly share their struggles. How would they would you know take a lot of odd jobs? Yeah, just totally. to get by yeah. while they pursue their acting career because let's face it not everyone's you know not every it's really expensive especially if you're gonna be you know doing a lot of things like attending acting workshops yep and training for other things that will really help you boost your your chances to get in those auditions casting calls right so yeah so some of them i i read they they waited they work as a waitress in restaurants yep. and i really like you know when i read all these stories you know there's some sort of a dignity of labor yeah or some sort of accomplishment or achievement when they talk about these things totally yeah i'm, I'm a waitress right now i'm, I'm that's my story <laughs> i'm doing that yep so do you get a lot of tips from your customers you know do they <laughs> well, give you generous tips <laughs> yeah well Yes, absolutely. People are very can nice the, in California. <laughs> can those, um, do, I'm curious to ask, are those tips enough to compensate for the, or to cover or reach the minimum wage that you're getting for the work that you render there? <laughs> I'm um, just curious. <laughs> not quite. No, that's a great question because not, not quite. I've definitely, I, I've 
very happy that I saved money back from, you know, back when I was managing grocery stores, it's gotten me, it's helped me a lot through the transition. Um, because again, it's, it's a, it's a, the middle of the country to California and New York's probably in the same category. It's very different expense wise. <laughs> so things that can get you by back home don't necessarily get you by here. <laughs> That's yeah. 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 <laughs> I agree. So, you know, you mentioned that you appeared in uh, three uh, major films so far, and mostly it's from HBO. So um, which role have you played so far among those three projects that you have liked the most? Probably, well, obviously, as you know, because I just spent the last like 10 minutes talking about Margaret Robbie. That experience was the coolest for me, just like meeting her and being able to watch her actually perform and um, just be involved in it as well. Um, that's probably my, my favorite experience that I've had. But I also, um, I, I don't know if a lot of people watch, um, uh, oh gosh, now I'm blanking on the name of it, Westworld, um, the HBO series. Um, I there's a the main character Dolores not to make any spoiler alerts <laughs> um, <laughs> but I just uh, I got done playing um, a, a version of her so I'm like a younger version of her from the series and um, that was that was a pretty cool experience just to have like all the cameras on you and and all the direction is like okay we need you to slightly adjust this eye and then keep this side of your mouth you know pull this down like it was like very like everything has to be on point because we are on your face. Um, that was a really cool experience. And, uh, you know, just an honor to be selected to be a version of a main character. Just really cool. So listening to you, um, does it help that uh, for people who would like to get, you know, to be successful in the acting or film industry, you really have to have good photographic memory. Since you'll be, you know, memorizing, rehearsing lines, blocking, know your blocking, you know, how you would appear and, you know, um, face the camera. So does it help that you really have a good photographic memory? I think, I think absolutely. Oh, I think it's just practice with anything. I think the more, um, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. So like, I, like, I think that was the one good thing school did for me <laughs> is like teach you how to like memorize things and like regurgitate for, you know, for that one test or that one thing that you are memorizing for. Um, it, it's very much that for me. So like, I, I'm, I'm a big writer. Like I write everything down so that I can memorize it. Um, some people are like more, uh, I, I don't know the right term for it, but like they, they respond better to audio versus visual. So like if they just, they say it over and over and over again, they learn it that way. Um, I think it just depends on the person, but it is definitely like, you have to be committed. Like there, some of these lines and um, you know, some, some of the, the uh, roles that these actors get put in and they have to memorize like within a short amount of time, it's impressive. I mean, it really is. It's a talent. True. So <laughs> what's your dream role for oh. now? Honestly, <laughs> anything that um, Margot Robbie has starred in has been like a dream for me. But also, like, like Charlie's Angels, Cameron Diaz's role. She was uh. so <laughs> like she was so good, um, and she was another one of my role models growing up too. So any anything like those kind of roles were like you're fit, you're active, you know, you're 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 cool, but then you also have this like you know, goofy, giggly, nice girl side to you, I could definitely see myself doing. And I think, you know, I'm um, the pageant, the pageant, and I'm glad that you happen to stumble in pageantry because I think that's what pageant organizers are looking for in their winners nowadays. Someone who has personality, someone who's confident, someone who can, you know, show that apart from being feminine, she could be very aspirational and ready to conquer her goals. Yeah. yeah, like a Charlie's Angel, you know, just casually do some backflips off the off the balcony, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I'm curious to ask, since, you know, um, as you do your research more about Reynaldo, Reynaldo International Del Cafe, mm -hmm. um, how are you preparing uh, for this competition as well? Are you, since it will be held in Colombia, are you learning how to speak Spanish? Have you had basic Spanish classes to get you by soon? 
see. <laughs> um, no, I, 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 like I said, I've been super lucky to have such a great team. I don't know. I've, I've, unfortunately I took French and German, you know, when I was growing up in school, I don't know why, if I could go back in time and, and just take Spanish, that would have been much more useful for me. Um, but at the time I was like, I'm going to be different. I'm going to take German and French when well, everybody else is taking Spanish. Um, but uh, it's so that that has been a challenge for me. But my team luckily speaks Spanish very fluently. So they've been very patient with me and kind of coaching me through some words. I am at no level to say anything correctly. I'm going to give it my best shot, <laughs> but it's definitely going to be broken Spanish. Uh, I know very minimal words, but um, I'm really appreciative to everybody that that is going to you know take the time to break stuff down for me in English because I, I am going over there rudely not knowing Spanish. And um, I, I really am like, I, I know that I have a translator with me and I just like, can't say thank you enough for that because that's, I mean, it's huge. It, you know, it's, it allows me to compete. It allows me to be there and, and to participate and not just be like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Is yeah. this the first time that the, the USA will be sending a candidate to Reynaldo del Cafe? Would you know? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm, right. like, I'm here for that one. Because <laughs> I heard there will be 28 uh, contestants, including you, who will be competing for the for the pageant. And uh, two of those will be first time countries from Hong Kong and the Philippines. Amazing. So cool. I'm so excited. So, you know, how do you think your participation in this pageant will, you know, affect or influence as you as how to how you will be leading your career goals in life, especially at this time of the pandemic? You know, it, this probably isn't like the right answer or the best answer. And, and I'm hoping it doesn't come off like selfish or anything. But I really am hoping that it opens up pageantry more and to get it more popular in the United States, because it's not like I said, I'm from a small town in the middle of the country. I think that's the fifth time I've told you that. Now. <laughs> I'm from a small town in the middle of the country. It's not a world where I'm from at all. Um, it's, you know, it's something you see on TV and you're like, wow, that's cool for, for them, you know, that, but that's never an option for me. And I'm hoping that, you know, being in this and, and it opens doors for more people, not just in California, but the United States is massive and there's so much talent here and it's everywhere here, you know. You see it mostly from California and New York, but there's so much talent in the middle of the country as well that's just not explored because you really just don't ever leave the middle of the country if you're if you're born and raised in there. And it's the best way that I can explain that, um, unless you know you randomly, unless you randomly you know venture out. But um, to answer your question, I'm hoping that this opens more doors and gives more you know young girls that are aspiring to be whatever they want to be it gives them that option to see like oh you know she did it i can do it so you know i really like how you are uh how you are really espousing for the values for the values that pageantry can instill to young ladies young american ladies like you there because you know if you really think about it especially now i don't know if you're well aware of what's happening on social media right now there's a certain um channel there's a certain show from from uh, a conservative channel, mm -hmm. Young Turks channel, where um, one of its newscasters uh, disc pageantry in general, saying that to the extent that she said that pageants should be banned because it objectifies and commodifies women like you in general, mm -hmm. because it doesn't do anything good to you to you all of you girls right there so what can you say that what can you say to those girls or to all these um people who keep looking down on pageants as nothing but a showcase of, of objectivity yeah i mean and I sexualization hear, among women i'd love to hear more on you know why that person feels that way or said that thing in, in their opinion on it. I, I haven't seen that. Um, because um, basically her main argument is that um, she says, you know, pageant girls like you um, teach people young, especially the young girls, to strive for perfection, to look pretty in front of the camera, to, to look uber sexy, feminine, 
with all these um, perfect hair, um, toned bodies, beautiful faces, which, to be honest, does not reflect what's happening in reality. Yeah, you know? I, I I think that's really interesting. I um, I think pageantry, at least from the small amount that I that I've been involved in it, it's been yes, absolutely. You know, there's a lot of beauty and like outer beauty uh, guidelines involved with it, but I think it's been a lot about way more than just you know. I can stand here and smile. Like I I, I have to talk a lot. Um, I have to say things a lot. I have to meet a lot of people and I, I build relationships with a lot of people. I think it's. I, I think there's not like a full understanding of actually like of, of what happens in pageantry if, if that's the view that they have they may have like the small like this is like what happens on stage <laughs> you don't say much <laughs> other than the one interview question but behind the scenes you're doing a lot more you're involved in a lot more you're opening more doors i think there's um i, I think it's i think it's great i think it forces you to not just be you know my hair is perfect my makeup is perfect i think it forces you to like no i i, I have to have a brain too i have to know what I'm talking about and who I'm talking to. And um, I mean, I, um, I'm, I'm still green in it, like I said, so I, I'm learning, but I, I, I've been blown away by the industry. I think it's amazing for women. As I wrap up this interview, you know, there's no doubt that you're so excited about the coming pageant. What do you hope to achieve with your candidacy here in the forthcoming Reynado International Del Cafe? Oh, uh, I, I, I can't, honestly, I can't wait. I don't, I don't have like a set, like this is a goal that I have. I just, I can't wait to be a part of it. I can't wait to learn. I can't wait to meet new people. I can't wait to open doors for, for young girls here in the United States. I, I, you know, it's just everything about it. I'm so excited. I, I don't know how to put it into words because I'm not like familiar enough to know, like this leads to this. I just, the experience and everything about it is I can't wait. I'm so what are you looking forward the most there in the upcoming competition? To to meet the girls, to meet these women that have been training their, you know, butts off for so long to do this and um, to see Colombia. I've only heard amazing things. You know, the food, the the views, the the weather. I think it's going to be raining when we're there, but <laughs> I heard the weather is amazing. Everything about it. I I don't have a single thing that I'm that I'm most looking forward to. I think it's just everything in general. <laughs> yeah, just enjoy the whole competition because I really feel like you know the judges and even the organizers would really prefer girls who are really enjoying it. Well, at the same time, of course, performing their, to the very best of their abilities. Well, you know, in the in the crucial events of the competition, you know, so they really want someone who's natural, who's bubbly, and full of character outgoing so i think you have all those qualities thank you in you that will make you a standout in the upcoming pageant you know what um you'll be you know you'll be in for a great time you'll be having the time of your life there in colombia and apart from the work that you have been doing as an aspiring actress there in hollywood california now i'm curious to ask so how do you see yourself five years from now oh Great question. But that was one of the things when I moved to California and I left my my job, I told myself I'm not putting timelines on my life anymore. I am literally any opportunity, any chance that I get, I'm taking it. I'm learning from the experience, but I'm no longer putting like a, this is where I'm going to be at this time in my life. Because I, I lived that and I did it and it was, it made life not enjoyable. So um Hopefully I am breaking even. We'll start there. Hopefully I'm breaking even on the cost of living in California. <laughs> <laughs> and for sure, you'll yeah. get you'll go more more than break even as Hopefully. you start, you know, reaching, you know, just persevere, just keep pushing through. Just, you know, just totally. go for everything that comes your way, whether it's a casting call or audition, anything that will really, you know, prop up or improve your uh your craft yes. as an actor as a model or anything that you would still like to aspire years from now yes. all right so there ends it thank you so much for this interview i really can't wait for you to 
you know, slay the competition very, very <laughs> soon to see the final product that you have all been working hard there in Hollywood or in Los Angeles for the upcoming competition. So, happy so, new year. Thank you, Get you to, too. I had so much blast getting to know you. And thank you, thank you so much for making this interview, Sir Giselli. Thank you, thank you so much. I think you have a winner right here <laughs> thank yeah you. so sweet yeah, yes yes now thank you thank you so much yeah yeah because you know for sure organizer you just have to back it up with your great catwalk skills on stage because you know it's going to be a latina pageant so yes everything will walk. be like performance based yeah you really have to walk yeah. <laughs> walk the talk <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right anyway i hope to visit i hope to see you soon if ever i get the chance there to visit los angeles in the near future and Please. good luck on your upcoming competition thank you adam so nice. I'm curious to ask: Will you be bringing a lot of Starbucks, uh, <laughs> you know, Starbucks, um, I was or any like I coffee stuff? stuff. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Really? <laughs> Since the pageant is all about coffee, it's all yes. about promoting coffee. Yes. <laughs> there, Colombian, so I, Colombian coffee. <laughs> all right. So I can't wait. So you know, it's my first time to cover this pageant too. So I'm really, I'm actually expecting a lot of pleasant surprises as well and get to know more about the pageant so, so you know doing this interview is also making me learn about the pageant as well so thank you thank you Sir Giselli and yeah and Rebecca for this wonderful interview all right I don't want to keep you any longer and just good luck Mwah. thank you Adam Stay safe and hydrated. Virtual hip hop yeah. kisses all the way from my office here in Manila. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Bye. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Thank you.